So we've successfully configured a network policy, pushed down an SSID to our access point, um, and we've connected a client to it. So let's look at what kind of monitoring capabilities we have for that client device. So let's click on the client itself, and you'll see many things in Extreme Cloud IQ that are written in blue. They're actually hyperlinks, so you can go and check more, more information on that. So if you wanted to go to the actual AP, we click on the AP, and we get more information on the device or the AP itself. Um, what you'll see in here is, so for this particular instance, we've just started, we've just deployed it, and in terms of machine learning and uh, monitoring data, there's not much there yet. But you can already see that we've started calculating the overall score of this device. For example, for this device, you see that the overall score is 94 out of 100, or 94%, which we consider to be excellent. In terms of uptime, so it's been up since we onboarded it, it, it never failed. Hardware unaffected, but what you see down here is configuration and firmware score is 70%, and that's probably because we're using an, an, an old version of firmware. So um, the other thing in here is we have device availability, so it's been up 100% of the time. Um, CPU, memory, power, those measurements are still coming in. We have, we've had uh, one update and we have one older version of, of firmware and this is penalizing the device score, which is then weighted and that results in this 6% of degradation. So nothing wrong with running a, an older version of firmware. We just consider that firmware to be maybe less good than if you're running something more current. Okay, we're waiting for other things as well. What you'll see down here once we start gathering more data, network usage is going to populate and you'll see any alarms uh, in here. What's happening in the environment is, so there was an interference alert. So there's a high amount of interference on Wi-Fi 0, which is expected because, A, we are in a uh, shared office area, and Wi-Fi 0 is 2.4. So based on what we know on Wi-Fi, this is actually expected behavior. And also, if we go back to the AP itself, what you'll see is the ACSP algorithm already reduced the power from 20 to 70 dB, and it's going to continue to do so uh, until it reaches a value that's going to be, well, at least trying to minimize the interference. Okay. So let's scroll down. You have here other things like system information, you know, serial number, um, HiveOS version, IP addresses, wireless interface statistics, and the data is available from, well, an hour all the way back to 30 days. Similar to wired interfaces, connected clients, so we currently have one client connected. It's in VLAN 1 on SSID PSK1, the one we configured. Okay, so as we go further along with these trainings, we're gonna, we're training, we're going to get more statistics in here, and also we're going to look at a fully configured instance that's been running for some time, and you'll see how, ri how much richer are the data sets in that instance. So the longer you use Extreme Cloud IQ, the more data you fill in, the better the insights, the more statistics, and the richer the dashboards are. So if you go under Manage, these tabs up here uh, show you different views, and the inventory says, uh, so what, kind, what types of devices you have, which models of devices you have, how many of them have their configuration in sync, how many of them, them are offline, how many of them have a commit pending, so the configuration is out of sync, and you still need to push the configuration down. If you use PPSK, you'll see the uh, PPSK consumption, and right now what well, we have AP one to an AP one to two, so a single device running this firmware version, and it's in a single location. So what this tells you is, uh, uh, by the way, each of these widgets that you see in the screen is exportable. So everything is exportable into an Excel spreadsheet. You just click this button over here, and you can download each of these um, dashboards. 
Uh, and this, this goes for the whole interface. So wherever you see this button, which is on most of the widgets, you can simply download what you see in an Excel spreadsheet. Either a table or a chart or uh, whatever is being displayed. And uh, this gives you a quick overview of what kind of devices are in your network, what's your firmware population, and where these devices are. And you can then filter based on access points, based on routers, switches, or VPN gateways. Moving on to the clients. And if you look at this button down here, you can actually expand the information that you have. Again, not much being populated right now, but more will be available. And you have your filter option over here. So on the left hand side, you always have a filter. And if you want to fil filter out clients in a certain location, you can definitely do so. So this is our client that's currently connected. Uh, you see that the access point already detected the operating system type as Android. Uh, this is done by the um, HiveOS on the access point itself. So it already profiled the device. It's currently in VLAN 1, connected to PSK1. And if we click on the device itself, we'll get more information. Moving on to users. So, if we compare our deployment, you'll see that there are no users. And that's because we're using a static PSK, so we don't have any identity information. We're just, we connected a device using a static PSK. Whereas in this instance in here, we're using other types of authentication, .1x and PPSK, more importantly. And the PPSK is used to identify a specific user. So, in here, we have Bruce. And let me just turn off one of the organizations because I need to only see this user within one organization. There we go. So we have statistics for Bruce. He's using a single client device. And currently he's located on branch 5. And this is Bruce's network usage. If Bruce would be using more devices, you would see those client devices in here. And this is how we switch from client monitoring to, to monitoring the experience of a particular user. But you need to have uh, identity information for that, which means you require some sort of authentication that provides identity, which assumes radius or PPSK authentication is happening. Okay, some other things um, you have events happening in your network. So if you go back to our lab instance, you see uh, configuration pushes happening, clients authenticating and deauthenticating to the network. We saw the in high interference alert, which again was caused because of the poor 2.4 uh, gigahertz frequency band in the area where we are currently working. No security events yet, and uh, this would be your basic monitoring tools that you have available once you have devices and clients connected and set up. So this is the Client360 view, which uh, tells you about the client and how that client is currently operating in this environment. We collect data for each client device for up to 30 days, so that's going to be available in here. And you can see RSSI, noise floor, how that has changed. But what you're really interested in is the session information. So we have average RSSI of 40, negative 46 dBm and average SNR of almost 50 dB, which is great. Um, we don't yet have enough data for the floor to be able to calculate how the RSSI and SNR behave uh, compared to other devices on the floor, because this is just the beginning of the setup, so we don't have enough data for that yet. But we can already see down here that this device is an 802.11ac device and is connecting at 78 megabits per second in the TX direction and receiving 86.50 megabits per second. And on the receive side, 
we do have 99% success rate, and on a transmit side, 98% success, success, success rate. And there's always going to be some retransmissions in the network, so this would be considered a very healthy device or healthy communication. We've observed an authentication, we've observed a DHCP exchange. The device hasn't yet really done anything on the network, so we haven't opened up any browser or anything, so, but we do have a su successful registration and authentication. Uh, and we do have an IP address. If you're interested in detailed messages into what's going on, so we see a four-way handshake here, probe request, probe response, so uh, this is useful for troubleshooting this device in more detail because you get all the interactions in terms of the 802.11 uh, MAC layer communication in here, and then you have the distribution of uh, data rates, and in time, and I'll show you this in a very fully populated scenario, you will get the detailed client 360 information as well. Okay. So let's switch to another instance and see a fully operational network that's been running for a while now. And let's select the client from there. And let's select this James Galaxy device in here. So this is how Extreme Cloud IQ presents the data that's been collected over a longer period of time. Uh, like I said, our lab, our setup is just being deployed, so we don't have enough data yet. But if you keep, if you keep it running for a while, you'll see much richer data sets. So in here, what you see is um, historical statistics. Let's go for... 30 days. Okay, wait for it for a load. You'll see connectivity events, uh, roaming events, how long it took to roam, did the health score change? So we see a longer roaming time in here, for example. And these would be events that would, um, one way or another, affect connectivity. Let's go back to the last 24 hours. Um, if you scroll down, you'll be able to see how this device, how the performance of this device compares to other devices on the same floor. So we're looking at building 9th Northeastern Boulevard, floor 1. And we're looking at how this device, which is represented by the green line, uh, is comparing to all other devices on the floor, and it's right in the middle um, on the mean value, and it is totally hitting the average. So it means this device, in terms of RF, we see it's behaving like all the other devices, and we know that having an RSSI of negative 50 dBm and SNR of 45 dB is actually quite good Wi-Fi performance. So this device, in terms of Wi-Fi, is performing well. In terms of session details, you see it's a one spatial stream device. Um, we have 86.50 megabits per second data rate. Uh, we have 60 megabits per second TX data rate. And in terms of Wi-Fi health, so we have SNR of 45 dB, we have uh, 50 dBm. However, in terms of overall Wi-Fi health, other devices are actually performing a little bit better. So we're just close to the standard deviation. Uh, that is because we have a 55% success rate in the RX and TX speed. So if you look at the session details, the, there's actually retransmissions going on, which could mean, because SNR is good, RSSI is good, which could mean this device is actually experiencing some sort of layer one RF interference. For troubleshooting purposes, every session, so every time the client device connects or roams, you have uh, down here roam times, so how long it took to switch from one AP to another, did association succeed, authentication, was there a DHCP exchange, did we see an ARP resolution of a D of a, for a default gateway, and did we see a successful DNS exchange? So these are all the things that would your a wireless client would require 
uh, to operate successfully, and you have all of that in here for each session. Last but not least, supported channels. So you will see which um, channels are supported by this device. So you see we have on 2.4 all channels from 1 to 14, and then on 5 gigahertz you'll see Uni 1, Uni 2, Uni 2 extended, and Uni 3. So all these bands are supported by this device. It's a one by one through one device, and it supports um, BGN on 2.4 and 811AC on 5 gigahertz, and the maximum transmit power that's supported is 20 dBm. So these are the capabilities of this device, and this will then uh, help you to plan out your network accordingly once you, uh, once you check you know, what kind of devices are available in your network. So this is how you would look and monitor a single client, and there's a lot of troubleshooting tools, a lot of detail available in this client 360 view.